Hey guys, it's Ike and welcome to part six of Wolf Tales. Hopefully it's the final part. Uh, we've gone through Marari stuff and now we are going to be heading into Fuyu's. But what we're going to do is that I'm going to start from the beginning and I'm just going to continue to skip through everything until we actually get into a new part with Fuyu. Or at least choose more things that's more focused on Fuyu. So it might be a little bit confusing, but that's how I'm going to play it. Also, I took out the uh, I took out the hentai patch, so there's none of that anymore. But if it if you know the scene still happens, I just wanted to test just to see whether it gets the scene gets cut a little bit, or uh, or if it still fully plays, except they just have underwears on, I guess. <laughs> Which, by the way, I just realized how more um how much more uh actually no never mind hey guys it's ike and welcome to part six of wolf tales hopefully this is the final part but you know we'll see we've gone through mirari's path and now we're hopping on to fuyu's However, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to start it from the beginning. I'm going to skip through everything until we get into new dialogues with Fuyu or just, you know, choose more Fuyu related options. So it might be a little bit confusing, but that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not going to play through the entire thing again. <laughs> but hopefully uh, Fuyu's, uh, Fuyu, Fuyu's route will be a little bit better. And I've also taken off the hentai patch because you know what I'm a, I'm a full fucking Christian now after uh, after that Uma Musume token. <laughs> so you know I can't have that in my good Christian channel. So I've taken it off just to check whether if there's any difference in this game or not. So yeah, let us get started. Oh shit! I forgot I have to enter my name. I guess I just leave it as enter name. Well, I mean, this is technically a Yuri channel, so I still have to pick a female whose name is Simon. <laughs> yes. Hello, Simon. Welcome back. Time to just press on the control. Oh, man. Damn, dude, we're going so fast everywhere. Everything's happening at such light speed. I hope you guys can read all that. I'm gonna just be mean to her. She seriously doesn't know how to use a fork. Fucking, fucking stupid. I guess I should have expected a half-human not to not know how to use basic utensils. This fork is interesting, but I'm not sure if I prefer this over chopsticks. It's quite difficult to grip food with. Eh? Chopsticks? Wait a minute, what? Yes, that's usually what I'd eat with. Taken aback, I realize I've said my judgmental comment out loud. Oh, um, I, I didn't mean... Awkwardly, I chiff on the couch. The time living out here alone has given me the bad habit of talking to myself. It's all right, Simon. I'm sure I'll, use, I'll get used to this fork in no time. Hold on, Marari. Hold on. This fork is interesting, but I'm not sure if I prefer this over chopsticks. because it's quite difficult to grip food with. As a person who started off using chopsticks and moving on to forks, you know, forks are a lot easier to grip. I still like using chopsticks because, you know, aesthetics and all, but out there... <laughs> when you, I, uh, okay, like, if you're a master, if, you know, if you're quite skillful at chopsticks, sure, you can pick up just about anything. <laughs> but you know what? With a fucking fork, you just punch a hole in it. Just as Marari is about to bring her fork to her mouth once more, sudden gusts of wind rattles the window. She suddenly stops and looks at the window. Ah, the snowstorm. I hope she's alright. Can I just skip this? Hell yeah. <laughs> Sick. Um, let me see. Leave the matter alone. Let's not inquire any further. <laughs> what, what was she talking about? Oh, she's doing the, the, the dishes and the washing and everything. Okay, so just leave the matter alone. That's unexpected, but certainly not unwelcome. Not unwelcome. Uh, if you're willing to help out a little bit, I'd be happy to get your assistant with a few more things. Of course, leave it to me. Whatever chore you throw at me, I'll be happy to- Oh, snap, who is that? Princess! Marari freezes as she hears someone shout, seemingly frightened by the voice of the one calling out. I'm just gonna skip this, actually. <laughs> ah, whatever. Hold on. Uh, so... The aggressive half-wolf grabs Marari by the wrist and forcefully drags her. 
call out to her. Let's stop her by force. Let's grab her hand. Now nah, let's just call out to her. Wait a minute. Hearing my shout, the girls both turn to face me. What is it? Do you have a problem with us taking our leave? Well, uh, not exactly. It's just... Just what? Spit it out, human. I breathe a deep sigh, then glare at the forceful wolf girl. Uh, what is it? What's with the look you're giving me? Are you trying to intimidate me, a proud soldier of... Shut up. The girl flinches as I speak to her and assume- Look at this! Okay, hold on. You know how Simon's attitude in the beginning? Like, this is such a great line of just him- Of just- Sorry, whoops. Of Simon saying, Shut up! <laughs> this is exactly what you should have told Marari <laughs> in part 5, Simon. I'll choose that, I'll leave that one, and I'm just gonna continue further on. Back into skip mode. What was it? Start cooking. It's not bad. <laughs> It's not bad, but it's not great either. I guess this is probably the best a person could do with the limited uh, ingredients available. No, only an amateur blames their ingredients. All right, Marari. Ingredients still has to do a lot with how your food comes out, all right? You're telling me if you use a spoiled fucking apple, it still tastes good because of whoever's, whoever's the chef? I don't fucking think so. This is just confirmation that I still have a long way to go before I master the art of cooking. Master the art of cooking? Out here? Sorry, Marari, but I don't see that happening. Go oh ho! Pitiful human! Is your palate so unrefined that you cannot appreciate the rich flavor of the princess's cooking? <laughs> okay. Oh no, this is actually- this is act- okay. The princess was taught how to cook in order to please her future mate, our next pack leader. It goes without saying that her skills are top-notch. Marari turns away as Fuyu casually reveals her situation and... Sick. <laughs> okay, well, I think I've already chosen some of the nicer routes, you know? So, like, if I was having here causing you distress, I almost replied yes without thinking. Okay, so that's for you puppy dog eye shit, and then just more conversations. <laughs> oh, this is- okay, so this is when they decided to leave, and they'll be fine! <laughs> I can better go fucking find these fucking wolf girls. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Those fucking sound- those punch noises. Is that from Sound Bible? So look at, look at that self-censorship. Oh, so good. Marari, stop trying to take a bath with me. I'm not trying to go for you. Hello? Let's just take a nap. Okay. God, what a stomach, am I right? <laughs> uh, da 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's not talk to Murari about the city. After a few more scenes in the city, the focus returns to the grassland. The camera pans between rabbits hopping around, insects feeding on plants, and fish swimming in a crystal clear river. Aw, aren't they gonna show any more of the human city? I sure hope not. Yeah, I agree with Simon. We chose this video to learn about animals from another environment, not to gawk at human beings. I suppose so. <sighs> Hearing Marari yawn and seeing her struggle to keep her eyes open, I reach for the remote and turn the television off. Surprised by my action, Fuyu looks over at me. I nod towards Marari, who doesn't seem to even notice that the television is off, at which point Fuyu immediately understands. Alright, I think that's enough for tonight. We can continue watching the video some other time. For now, let's all go to bed. Uh, sick. <laughs> I just love doing that skip. You just hear that little punch noise. <laughs> I feel like all the other options didn't really matter as much because they all, most of them anyways, all led to the same conversation. And like, I feel at this point right here is when, you know, things actually happen.
So let's uh let's go and follow Fuyu. This is where we're gonna. Uh oh yeah, they had to fight. Appar that was a slap apparently, which doesn't really sound like a slap. It sounds like somebody got punched behind the face. <laughs> let's follow Fuyu, huh? All right, Fuyu, where the fuck are you? Before she can disappear from my sight, I quickly follow after Fuyu. Departing from the same door through which I've just entered, Fuyu runs out into the snow seemingly without any purpose or direction. She simply runs straight ahead, intent on creating as much distance between herself and Marari as she can. <sighs> Slow down, would you? I'm not as athletic as you are. Simon, what are you- Oh, I get it. The princess couldn't bring herself to face me, so she sent you to do her bidding. Is that it? I mean, uh, that would be pretty fucking fast, you know, if she ra if you ran out and then Marari's like, Go get her! <laughs> That'd be pretty quick. Fuyu, initially surprised to see me, quickly adopts an expression of annoyance. Her bid for solitude has failed, and rather than be greeted by the face of her best friend, the one who chases after her is her least favorite human. Well, how can you be her least when you're the only human? Whatever. What is that line? Is that a... Oh, is that just like a tear of the bra? I, okay. Oh, I mean, I guess. <laughs> she does have like tears all over the place. I don't even know how, what the fuck happened. And even if she didn't have all these tears, like what the fuck is this fashion sense? <laughs> and you know what? I gotta say, if you got a toned stomach, you know, might as well show it off. Nobody sent me anywhere. I just saw you running away from the cabin in tears. So I thought I'd better check up on you. I wasn't in tears, and if I was, they were righteous tears of anger. Righteous anger, huh? What happened? Did Marari refuse to give you seconds for breakfast? I play dumb and intentionally provoke Fuyu, thinking that this way she'll be more likely to slip up and accidentally tell me the truth. Unfortunately, it's none of your business. Get lost, human. My plan fails almost immediately. Come on, Fuyu, don't be like that. Besides, even if you don't tell me, you know that Marari will. Wouldn't you rather have me hear your side of the story? <laughs> Why should I care what you hear? It's not like you'd take my sign anyway. You don't know that. Try me. I might surprise you. Fuyu turns away, but doesn't actually refuse. After thinking over my words for a moment, she lets out a sigh, then turns to face me once more. Fine, I'll enlighten you. This may be difficult for a human to understand, but within the pack, everyone has their own role and responsibilities. For some of us, that's gathering food. For others, it's building shelter. Ah, so it's kind of like a town building simulator. In Marari's case, it's her duty to lead us. She must protect us from harm, make difficult decisions about our future, and ensure that everyone does their part to help out. <laughs> but it's, in the snow, I just think of Frostpunk. Most importantly, it's up to our leader to solve any disputes which arise. They must put an end to any bickering and quell unrest within the pack before it becomes a problem. Are you with me so far, Simon? Yes, I understand what you're saying. Make decisions, keep everyone in their place, stop any infighting. Typical leadership. Good, I'm glad this isn't too difficult for you. Now, given the, rep uh, given the responsibility of a leader, what do you think would happen if our leader suddenly abandoned us? Well, obviously, you don't have a very good structure if your leader leaves and then everything else falls apart. <laughs> a new leader would be chosen? A new leader would take the position by force. Democracy has never worked for my kind. At the end of the day, whoever is strongest will attempt to seize control, with or without the support of the pack. No, oh, doesn't that just mean that nobody likes each other enough to even, to, to even like combine with each other? The whole point of democracy is the power of the people. So like nobody wants to team up with each other. There's no groups or anything. Of like, you know, like, they might be stronger, but we have the numbers, so, like, it, whatever. <laughs> In the best case scenario, they take over without a fight, and everybody accepts their new leader right away. If they don't, or if more than one person puts their hand up, then there's a power struggle. 
the wannabe leaders kill one another, or if they don't want to fight, they take their own followers and form their own pack. Either way, the pack loses its power. It's reduced in size, possibly fragmented, and everyone needs to cover multiple roles in order to fill the gaps. But don't think that's the end of the matter, Simon. What I've described is simply the beginning. <laughs> it turns into a turf, turf war. <laughs> I unconsciously gulp as I try to take in everything that Fuyu has just told me. Honestly, I'm surprised. Marari's desertion in is beginning to sound far more serious than I thought. I can see now why Fuyu is so f serious about bringing Marari back home with her. Wow, that's quite a lot to process. I never thought Marari's disappearance would have such a profound impact. Well, now you understand. Can I count on you to give Marari a push in the right direction when the time comes? Change the subject, or I won't do that! Let me just, uh, there you go, save on that slot. Hmm. Hmm, what would I say? I don't want to change the subject, because that's just, like, avoiding her question, you know? Let's just say I won't do it. Sorry, Fuyu, but even knowing your situation... I'm not gonna do that. Marari's decision is hers alone. I won't influence it any more than I already have. If she'd rather live in solitude than return to her pack, then I won't try to tell her not to. Do you really think Marari would be okay like this? Huh? Well, what do you mean? Like what? You know, out here, all alone, living like you do. The princess may say she wants to separate from the pack, but do you think she's really capable of it? Ah, so you're talking about Marari's well-being now, rather than that of the pack. No, I can't say that I think Marari would be suited to the life of a loner. It takes a great deal of strength, both physical and mental, to live on your own far removed from society. I may not know Marari as well as you do, but personally, I don't think she'd cope. Indeed, I believe we are in an agreement. The princess's strength lies in how she interacts with others. On her own, she is quite hopeless. <laughs> I kind of figured that was the case. Living in solitude isn't for everyone. I agree. The princess ought to live her life in safety and comfort, surrounded by others. It, it just feels like we just had that conversation like a sentence ago. <laughs> no, not just the princess. I believe that applies to all people. Well, therefore, you don't bring me into this, all right? <laughs> Everyone, that's a bit of a stretch. I'm actually pretty happy to be out here by myself, you know. Are you really? Alright, Fuyu. <laughs> Fuyu narrows her gaze as she scrutinizes my face. <laughs> what? Why my face? You say that you're happy out here, but wouldn't you rather be with your friends and family? Wouldn't you prefer to make a difference in the lives of others and to share in their experiences? Well... Maybe sometimes, but aren't I already doing what you just suggested? Huh? A smile surfaces on my face as I take the opportunity to share my perspective with Fuyu. You just implied that I should be living with my family because that way I would make a difference in the lives of people other than myself. But isn't that exactly what I've been doing out here? I don't mean to brag, but a few days ago, I saved a life. Mirari's life. If I hadn't been living out here, far away from civilization, that girl would have perished in the snow. Fuyu goes quiet. Even if she doesn't agree with my lifestyle, there's no way she can complain about me saving her friend's life. Anyway, even if I never met Marari, I don't think there's any shame in choosing to live for and by yourself. I came out here because I wanted to get away from everyone, and that's exactly what I've done. So, while I personally don't think my lifestyle would work for Marari, I'm not about to tell her what she can and can't do with her life. Maybe she'll miss everyone and come back. Maybe she'll enjoy living in solitude. Either way, I think it's Marari's decision and whether she decides, whatever she decides, you're just going to have to live with it. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to agree to disagree. I can see your point and you've given me a lot to think about. But, at this moment, I still can't accept Marari's selfishness. That's fine. If you'll agree to try and see things her way, then I think that's plenty. 
And knowing Marari, it's probably all she's ever hoped for. Hmm, that's a nice conversation with uh, Fuyu. Don't remember the conversation with Marari for some reason. I'm starting to block out everything that's involving Marari right now. <laughs> By the way, I think I've said this before, but this is my uh, this is my third year of uh, Love Life Sunshine. These are the third years. Once Fuyu has returned to the cabin, it it takes. Can I just skip this? Sick. Whoo! <laughs> Thank God for the no, no, no hentai patch. <laughs> Mirari and Fuyu continues to play in the water while I desperately try to hide my reaction. Oh, wait. Uh. What I'm thinking is that there was a cut there, since I'm still playing the, the, the this without the hentai patch. I think there was a cut there, because it just kind of abruptly ended like this, and then, yeah. Because... I was, I was looking through the scene again, and there's no, there was no mention of like the, you know, my nipples are sticking out or some shit like that. So, okay. So that means it's gonna, so the scenes will get cut. Okay. Sick. I didn't want to see it anyways. <laughs> Following an uneventful walk. Uh, okay. Sick. <laughs> We're gonna have this bedtime scene again. So after the uneventful walk, a uh, few moments later in the bed, a uh, familiar- yeah, the door opens. A few moments later, a familiar pair of ears enter my line of sight, followed by two timid, curious eyes. <sighs> Fuyu, what are you doing? Something wrong? If you're hungry again- if you're hungry again, go and ask Marari to make you something. Cause I ain't making you no fucking dinner, bitch. <laughs> Without a word, Fuyu draws closer. She tiptoes over to my bed, careful not to make too much noise. Once Fuyu reached near my bed... Good thing I don't have the patch on because I'd be very confused what is what is happening in this image right now. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> she begins to undress. F Fuyu, what are you doing? Are those cans? Are those, like, can of beers right there? Like, what are those? Why are they so fucking big? They look like jars. <laughs> what is this pose? <laughs> she inches closer to my bed and shove her butt right in my face. Are you still half asleep? Paying my words, no mind, Fuyu removes the rest of her clothes. I mean, she doesn't really need to. Her clothes are already off. <laughs> She then crawls towards me on her hands and knees, not stopping until she reaches my side. Simon. Si si I can't do a whisper for <laughs> an inch away from my face. Fuyu calls my name. Her cheeks are red, her eyes are watery, and I can tell at a glance that she's having a very bad allergy reaction. Simon, please. While facing me, Fuyu opens her legs. Now that she's almost naked and on her knees right in front of me, I can see every inch of her body. Despite her embarrassment, Fuyu makes no effort to hide her body from my eyes. It's your fault I'm like this. I never once felt this way around Marari or the other members of our pack. So, take responsibility. God, if only I had a, if I if I had a penny for every time a girl said that, I'd have a lot of pennies. <laughs> As I dared to think earlier, this wolf girl is in heat. Listen for you. This is this whole heat concept again, which I don't like. I still continue to not like. Listen for you. I'm flattered that you think of me that way, but you don't really want to do this. What you're feeling right now is just an influx of your hor in what an influx in your hormones. If you go through with this, you're surely going to regret it. And um, are you done? <laughs> Shut the fuck up and fuck me. <laughs> Fuyu pushes her face right next to mine. With her lips an inch away from mine, she looks into my eyes longingly and continues to speak. I don't expect you to feel the same way I do. In fact, after all the things I've said and done to you, you probably despise me. No, I mean, you're a tsundere, so. Even so, I can't help the way I feel. Whether you love me or hate me, please, I beg of you, embrace me. No. If I hate you, I'd rather just kick you out of my room. Get out of here. 
Oh, we did a little smooch. Before I can respond, Fuyu closes the final distance between us. Her soft, pursed lips brush up against mine, kissing me so lightly that I can just barely feel it. The moment she begins to pull back, Fu- wait, what? Fuyu closes in once more, this time with confidence. She pushes her lips against mine forcefully, taking me by surprise and stealing the air from my lungs. Wait, what? <laughs> that just sounds like she just gave you a smooch and she just sucked the air out of you. <laughs> Fuyu then moves back slightly and lowers her head, bringing her lips to my neck instead. She runs her tongue down along my neck for a moment before doing the same thing with her nose, nuzzling me expectantly. What? Unable to resist my own urges, I re agree to help Fuyu with her own. Kneeling behind her, I make my choice of whether to use my finger or mouth. I focus on her pleasure, on, on her pleasure, okay, and the sound of her heavy panting and moaning fill up the room. And then it just cuts off like that, okay. Huh, <laughs> so, okay, so it cuts that off. Also, I just realized he fucking, wait. Yeah, he basically fucked Fuyu on like the- sorry, he- she, Simon! She basically fucked Fuyu in like the first night instead of with Marari where Simon's like, No, we can't do this! You need to do it with the one you love! <laughs> Over here, Simon's like, Ah, Fuyu's pretty fucking sexy! I'll do her! <laughs> Fuyu's body falls limp on my mattress and the only sound still rever reverberating throughout the room is her ragged breathing. Though her face is red and her hormones are likely still running amok, I've managed to satisfy Fuyu's urges, if only temporarily. <sighs> Unbelievable. I thought that she might have been in heat, but I never expected Fuyu- Wait, what? I thought that she might have been in heat, but I never expected Fuyu to come to me about it. Perhaps Fuyu has a better impression of me than I thought. Did you hear what she just fucking said? Looking down at Fuyu's peaceful expression as she sleeps, I sigh one more time and resolves to help her out once more. You know, while I'm fucking recording this, I just saw somebody commented on my wolf tail video and they just said, Shoot a gun with Fuyu's- Hey, you know what? <laughs> How dare you? While Fuyu sleeps, I wipe down her body, get her dressed, and roll her onto her back. I then take my place beside her, close my eyes, and try one more time to go to sleep. <laughs> Damn, who am I thinking? There's no way I'm gonna be able to get sleep after that. This is gonna be a long, long night. In the days following my night together with Fuyu, I notice a clear change in her behavior. While it's nothing as extreme as the night she crept into my bed, she's definitely not her usual self. Every day, she follows me around, acting like she has something she wants to say, yet never actually talking to me. Fuyu also steals glances at my face whenever we're eating or watching television, and it seems like she's been clinging to Marari less and less every day. While I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for her behavior, the only event which ever comes to mind is the night Fuyu crept into my bed. Are you sure you've eaten enough, Fuyu? You usually eat three times as much. Fuyu? Hmm? Oh, princess. I'm not hungry. I already eaten my fill. Are you sure? There's still plenty left. <sighs> Back to ignoring me, huh? Fuyu continues to watch me out of the corner of her eyes as Marari sighs in aspiration. You've changed Fuyu more in a couple of nights than I would have thought possible in a lifetime, Simon. What did you do to her exactly? I finger banged her! Hey, don't look at me. If Fuyu's changed, it's her own doing. <laughs> Not because of the finger banging. Mm, perhaps so. But even then, something must have happened to make her want to change herself. Did you sleep with her? <laughs> I almost spit out the content of my mouth as Marari takes me completely by surprise. What do you mean sleep with Fu? Yes, did you? Of course not. Hmm. Marari stares right through me, my bold face lie, only making her lift quirk. I can't meet her gaze. 
Fuyu is a woman of age. She has not yet taken a mate, and she appears to have taken a liking to you. I can see no reason for you to turn down her advances. You make it all sound so simple. Is it not simple? Of course it isn't. I mean, Fuyu's just acting like this because she's in heat, right? Ah, so you're concerned that Fuyu will no longer desire you once her hormones have settled down. I wouldn't worry about that. Why shouldn't I? Of all things weighing on my mind, that's a pretty big one. Smirking to herself, Murari turns to look at Fuyu. Following her eyes, I do the same thing. The moment I do, my eyes met Fuyu's and she hurriedly looks away. I don't think you have anything to worry about. We don't just do it with whoever happens to be closest when our hormones flare up. If Fuyu has chosen you, then you can rest assured that her feelings will not change so easily. Our species mates for life, you know. Smiling ear to ear, Marari happily clears the table as we all finish eating. While she's doing that, I look over at Fuyu, who once again turns away in a panic the moment our eyes meet. Even if Marari says there's nothing to worry about, I really should do something about Fuyu's behavior. If she does like me, then I want her to at least be able to look at me in the eye, and if she doesn't, then we need to clear up this mis misunderstanding as soon as possible. Either way, the two of us are due for a serious talk. <laughs> okay. Despite resolving myself to speak to Fuyu, the day quickly passes by without me being able to talk to her at all. Every time I try to speak to her, Fuyu either ducks behind a couch, hides behind Murari, or leaves the room. I try to approach her many times, but no matter what I do, she refuses to talk to me. <sighs> so much for having a serious discussion. I guess I just have to wait until Fuyu has calmed down before I try talking to her. Giving up for the day, I return to my bedroom. As I go to walk through the door, however, I find someone standing in the way. Fuyu? Yeah? Fuyu jumps in fright as I call her name. Fuyu, what are you doing out here? Is there something you'd like to talk to me about? Fuyu says nothing as she stares at me, but it seems like she wants to say something. The tsundere! It's fighting! <laughs> Perhaps a bit more privacy is a good idea. Would you like to go on for a walk? What? Fuyu opens her eyes and mouth wide as she stares at me in shock. The next moment, however... Mm, yes. Yes, I would. To my surprise, Fuyu agrees to the walk. She brushes past me and out the door and quickly descends down the stairs. Better follow her. Well, yeah. It's guys going on a walk, right? The air outside is crisp, but not to the point of being unpleasant. I figure I'm better off trying to talk to Fuyu out here. The outdoors seem to calm her. Beat red, yet smiling faintly, Fuyu walks in front of me. Without looking back at me even once, she sits on the edge of a stump, fidgeting restlessly as she looks down at her fingers. I follow Fuyu over to the fallen tree, then take a seat right next to her. Um, Simon. About the other night. Yes, for you? I... What what happened that night? It, it was all, um, you know. I only acted that. I only acted that was because... Okay. <laughs> I only acted like that because of my biology and, um... You know, instinct made me do it or something. So, don't go misunderstanding, okay? It's not as though I like you or want to, to be your mate or anything. <laughs> the tsundere is just fucking pouring out. <laughs> it's not like I like you. B -b -b Baka! <laughs> Stammering uncontrollably, Fuyu eventually manages to squeeze out a few sentences. Still looking down at her lap, she plays with her fingers as she speaks, desperately desperate to avoid eye contact at all costs. Ah, so it was just a hormonal thing after all. No, Simon, she's a fucking tsundere, dude. It's the dude, lady, lady dude. I should have known better than to go on as far as I did. Thankfully, Fuyu doesn't seem to resent me. Woo-wee! Woo! A little disappointed, I manage to smile and turn to Fuyu. This 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 lady does not understand what a tsundere is. <laughs> 
I understand you are acting in accordance to your biological urges. We can chalk it up to a mistake of passion and move past it. You don't understand anything at all. Oh no, Simon, why? I said you don't understand. I'm not just some slave to my body, you know. I have my own thoughts and free will. Oh, I wouldn't do that with someone just because my body told me to, okay? No, I get that, but didn't you just say, ah, jeez, forget I said anything. Oh, the Sundere is mad. This is why I can't stand you humans. Oh, shit, dude. Jumping to her feet in a huff, Fuyu begins to leave the area. Confused and also somewhat worried about her, I stand up and follow after her. Fuyu, I get that you're feeling temperamental at the moment, but... Shut up! You don't know a damn thing about how I feel. Well, Simon may not. Simon may don't. Simon may not, but I do. <laughs> how could a human ever understand what my kind goes through? Fuyu snaps at me for a moment. I... For what? Fuyu snaps at me the moment I catch up to her. Backing away defensively, Fuyu acts like cornered prey, like a cornered prey, as she creates distance between us. No, it's not just you. Even the princess doesn't get it. None of you understand my feelings at all. None of you even try to understand. Look, Fuyu, yellow fucking sundere. <laughs> you need to, you need to how about you express your feelings correctly, huh? Instead of trying to hide behind that mask of yours. Let the dare come out. <laughs> Why is Mirari the only one who gets to be selfish? Why can't I take something for myself for once? Even here, away from the pack, I still can't have things my way. Before I realize it, Fuyu's squabble with me has turned into an excuse for her to complain about her lot in life. Out in a forest with nobody but a single human being, Fuyu begins to vent her frustration. Why? Why is it always her? Why is it that no matter what I do, I'm always living in her shadow? Even now, when it's just the three of us, I'm still nothing compared to her. Fuyu, what are you talking about? I don't know what life was like with your pack, but in my cabin, the two of you are equal. Don't lie to me, Simon. The princess got here first. She made herself useful, enamored herself with human culture. She even managed to steal your heart. <gasps> Fuyu! <laughs> Before I could, before I could so much as stake my claim, that girl already took everything for herself. My, my heart? What are you trying to say for you? Oh, Simon. <laughs> you, you don't need to hide it. I can see the way you two look at each other. She's the reason why you don't want to be with me, isn't she? Oh, what? <laughs> for you, Marari and I don't have that kind of relationship. Like I believe that. You two probably have do been doing lewd things this entire time behind my back, haven't you? Oh, shit! <laughs> Already, I'm really liking Fuyu better. Just a lot more yelling. <laughs> Which suits me a lot better than doing that soft voice. We have not! Marari's a nice girl, and I do like her, but... But what? But you're the only one with whom I've ever done something like that, Fuyu. Eh? Fuyu's anger dissipate in an instant, replaced by confusion. Before she can regain her senses and deny my words, I take a seat on a log, prompting Fuyu to do the same. What is his pose even? The lonely wolf girl. That's the uh, achievement. <laughs> she hesitates for a moment, then sits next to me, crossing her arms indignantly. Fuyu, I'm sorry about what I said before, but I didn't do it for the reason you're thinking. Humans... <sighs> humans aren't like half-wolves in that way. We don't mate for life or want to have kids with people we barely know. Humans tend to spend years with one another before talking about that kind of stuff, and even then, it rarely works out. That's why I don't want to enter into that kind of relationship on a whim, or as a consequence of you going into heat. But I... It's not you for you. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> You've done nothing wrong. Taken, taken in by my words, Fuyu sits quietly next to me. I place my hand on Fuyu's head and speak to her in a soft tone of voice. 
With a gentle smile on my face, I look over at her fondly. You know, looking at this picture just really makes me want to, like, touch her tail. <laughs> touch fluffy tail. <laughs> Where's my option for that, actually? For you, I've been, alone f I've been alone for a long, long time. And just like you, I have no idea how to act around others. I closed off my heart and started pushing people away and abandoned everyone and everything I ever cared about. All to start a new life out here in my own. But, you know, in the short time you and Marari have been here, you've shown me how impossible my goal was from the very beginning. I was wrong to think that I was better off alone. The time I've spent with the two of you have been the most fun I've had in years. And I think that if you open your heart, actually, hold on, let me just readjust my stuff. If you allowed someone else to see your true self for once instead of getting defensive, you might feel the same way. I mess up Fuyu's hair slightly with my hand, then remove my hand from her head and lean back. Even so, I know it's hard to change. I also know what a big decision this is and how great of an effect it will have on your life. That's why I won't make any careless promises to you. If you're serious about wanting a relationship with me, Fuyu, then you'll need to be patient. I need my partner to be someone who takes these matters as seriously as I do and won't give up everything on a whim. I need someone who shares the same ideals I do. Why did you fucking say that to Marari? You were so head over heels for her that you're like, oh yeah, Marari, I'll fucking join your pack. <laughs> Fuyu remains silent as she listens to my words. Other than expressing minor displeasure at having her hair ruffled, Fuyu remains attentive, barely changing her expression or breaking her concentration. When I finish speaking, I, I just realized, how does she stuff that- how does she stuff that tail in her pants anyways? I guess it's like, lopping over the shorts, the pants, pants shorts. When I finish speaking, Fuyu looks away with a serious expression on her face, still clinging to a modicum of defiance. Modicum? Insolent human. I already told you, I don't want anything like that from you. But you do, don't you? I'm not talking to you anymore. Fuyu pouts and continues to avoid eye contact. Oh, just pure Sundarate, so beautiful. <laughs> oh, my heart feels like it's been warmed. <laughs> I take that as Fuyu signaling that she needs some alone time to think about everything I've just told her. Alright, I understand. I'm going to head back inside now. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Fuyu. Wait! Uh, um... Fuyu hurriedly stops me as I begin to stand, but immediately realizes she has nothing in specific to say. I don't mind if you want to stay a little bit longer. J just for a little while, and not to talk or anything. Sh we sit outside as Fuyu calms down. The night air is becoming chilly, and we'll have to go back inside shortly. But for now, I'm content to just sit here with Fuyu. After some time, it's surprisingly... It's surprisingly... What? Uh, surprisingly, after some time, it's Fuyu who speaks up first. Hey, you're really able to make a go of it out here on your own? For a human woman, isn't that pretty strange? I guess. So even if someone like you can make it, I probably could too. What are you saying for you? Do you want to become a lone wolf? I don't know. I hadn't even considered the option until now. All my life, I've been told to live for the pack and their rules, to serve Marari's family. But if someone had just told them that we didn't need to be like that, maybe things would be okay. Do you resent her? Marari? No. She's just as much as a victim of circumstance as I am. She's been groomed from a young age to be the next pack leader, though seeing her refuse to go back to the pack makes my blood boil. Fuyu is silent again, before speaking up once more. Maybe I can even live here with you. That's the last thing I expected you to say. Yeah? So what? It's not like it's shameless for two girls to live together. That's also the last thing you should be saying after the other night. Can half-wolves even accept a female couple? It's not common, but it's not something anyone concerns themselves with. We have much more pressing obligation like food and rival clan attacks. 
It can also be beneficial to have extra parents around to take care of the cubs. I was about to say clubs. I wasn't expecting that. Why? Human civilization is a bit flipped around. At the top of the food chain, we no longer have to worry about food or our everyday safety, but we're always caught up in squabbles over how someone else lived their lives. Live their lives. Uh, else lives their lives. Okay. <laughs> Who cares about how humans live? What I'm saying is if a half-wolf wanted to take another female's mate, that's fine. Actually, a human mate would be weirder. We're just having some social commentary on fucking the human, human culture. <laughs> For you, scratches her chin, no doubt thinking about the pros and cons of a human and half-human relationship. Chuckling to myself, I urge her to head back inside the cabin with me. At this rate, I think we'll be able to return to normality in no time. That was a cute scene, I like that. It was just a full-on tsundere scene. Hey, take a drink every time I say tsundere. <laughs> a few days have passed since Fuyu and I had our nighttime discussion. Given time to process what was said, both girls gradually returned to their usual selves and we... We go back to how we were before our trip to the hot spring. And... Okay. Let me just pretend to fight the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I feel a little bad about deceiving the girls, but... Whoa! Simon? Watch out, it's going out of control! Yeah! Princess? Ah, you fiend, get away from her! Oh, it's a tough one. Fuyu, don't get any closer. The sight of wolf girls excites it. What? Fuyu turns bright red in the face. C compentable beast, get away from me. Don't worry, I've got this under control. Just, just a, a little more. Got it. Having cleaned the floor around where we usually eat, I turn the vacuum cleaner off. The moment I do, the noise stops and both wolf girls begin to relax. Is it, is it dead? Careful, princess. It may be lowering us into a false sense of security. And skip. Sick. Okay, let me just do a little reread of this. Uh, I'm not gonna try and do that weird accent that I gave that wolf girl. <laughs> Maybe I will, actually. <laughs> um, okay, so the death of her mom. And three of us have been killed and injured. Uh, th 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 I understand, but I really do. This is your fight. This is the future of your pack. Uh, you're gonna regret for your extra life. Okay, and then I shift my gaze to Fuyu for a moment as I speak those final words. Quickly averting her eyes, Fuyu tries her best to conceal the blush on her face as she attempts to retain her serious expression. Very well. I will go and fulfill my obligation. Tell the girls to wait! Oi! Stop! Okay, they look around the cabin for materials, uh, 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 separates, and soaks on her own. <laughs> and she moans to herself while the girls do see fit. Okay. Hey, Simon, can you come here for a second? Hmm? Sure for you. What's up? I was just wondering if we could borrow some rope and a couple pieces of wood to make a trap? That's right. Can't make traps without materials, you know? Oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> Genius. Take as much as you need. So? Huh? Was there anything else? Oh, um... No, I just thought that maybe... F forget it, it's not important. I'll go back to planning now. For reasons beyond my comprehension, Fuyu hesitates to leave my side. Red in the face, she regretfully returns to her injured companion's side, then shoots one more glance in my direction before returning to work. Huh. I thought Marari was the only one who's really shaken up by all this, but it seems like Fuyu isn't quite herself either. Well, yeah, because she has to go and fucking battle this out uh, of this quote unquote alpha wolf. <laughs> Maybe I should talk to Fuyu once she's finished preparing everything out with her friend? <laughs> that question? This will likely be our last night under the same roof after all. I'd hate for anything important to be left unsaid. By the time Fuyu has finished making her preparation, night has already fallen. 
I start to cook dinner for the four of us, once again leaving the girls to their own devices. Surely enough, a short while later, I hear the pitter-patter of stealthy footsteps behind me. I won't be ready for another 30 minutes for you. Oh, what? H how did you- Marari wouldn't try to sneak up on me like that, or eat half-cooked food for that matter. And the other girl was too injured to sneak around so quietly, so I figured it couldn't be her. I turned my head as I addressed Fuyu. While doing so, I finally realized something. Say, where are the other two? They've both gone for a bath. Marari insisted that the wounds should be cleaned off properly, so it seems like they might be in there for a while. Hmm, is that right? Well, whatever, I'm sure Marari could use a distraction right now. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Stop it, game! How dare you! <laughs> Just because she's the leader of the pack doesn't mean she has to be the top, alright? Yes, perhaps so. Returning to the task at hand, I turn away from Fuyu and continue chopping up the potatoes. Hey, Simon. No, you can't have any until it's cooked. That's not what I was gonna ask. Suddenly, adopting a solemn tone of voice, Fuyu pinches the hem of my shirt. Simon, um, do you remember the night when I, um, I mean, you asked me that before, but it, whatever, imposed on you? You mean you went into heat? What? No, I wasn't. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. I know that this isn't something you can control. So what about it? If, if I came to you like that again... What would you do? I place the knife in my hand, down on the chopping board, then turn around the face for you properly. When I do, I realize that Fuyu is fidgeting restlessly and her face is beet red. That's, uh, that's an unexpected question. I guess I could help you out again, if you're okay with me being your partner. I don't know if we'll be able to do that, though, with an extra person here. It might be difficult to do that undetected. <laughs> what? It doesn't have to be tonight. Huh? I raise a brow as Fuyu stands before me. If I asked you to fuck me, would you? But you're leaving tomorrow, aren't you? If not tonight, then... I I'm going to return here, okay? Once the princess and I have done what we need to, I'm come. I'm going to come back here, whether you want me here or not. We're going to do what we did last time. No, we're going even further. Oh, shit. <laughs> because, you know, um, I've already chosen you. Chosen me? I don't understand. Chosen me for Simon. <laughs> ah, jeez. Can't you figure it out for yourself? That's why I can't stand humans. Listen here, Simon. Once the princess and I have fulfilled our duty, I'm coming straight back here and we'll continue this conversation. Until then, wait for me, okay? Before I can ask for you to elaborate, she quietly slinks away. Dude, she's asking you if you want to fuck. Come on! <laughs> Fuyu returns to the couch for a moment before her fellow wolf girls leave the bathroom, giving me no opportunity to probe any further. Until this incident comes to an end, all I can do is speculate. Speculate about what? Yeah, just boning? That being said, perhaps I'd better be off waiting for Fuyu to just tell me herself. Right now, going off what she said to me, it almost sounds like... She wants me to become her mate. No, she wants to fuck you. What are you... <laughs> Come on, man. Lady. <laughs> As the morning sun rises, the inhabitants of my cabin all wake up bright and early. Is that, a ha is that an expression I've ever seen from Marari? Anyways, let me just go back to this. So, so following breakfast, we'll leave. Uh, right when you are. So, so you'll be back. Of course, you're welcome anytime. Same goes for you, Fuyu. Don't be a stranger. Yeah, don't be a stranger, Fuyu. That goes without saying. Well, we already promised to meet each other again after everything is settled, didn't we? We sure did. Well then, if nothing more is needed to be said, I believe it's time for us to head off. We'll be back as soon as we are able. However, should the worst happen, don't finish that sentence. You're both going to be fine. In fact, I'm sure you'll be back here pestering me in no time. I do hope so. 
Taking on what's my mind? It couldn't be, could it? What Fuyu said last night about her choosing me? No way. I thought you already fucking come to that conclusion, Simon. Why, why are you being so fucking stupid? <laughs> oh, I guess it's, it's, it's what happens when you live by yourself in a cabin for like seven years. It looks like you already know what I'm talking about. <laughs> why not end your suffering and go after them? I'm sure they'll be happy to see you. Besides, the wolf girl's eyes suddenly narrow. They're gonna need all the help they can get. Okay. Okay, okay. And then the truck swerve off to the side of the mountain. Simon? Wait, how did you... <sighs> Talk later. I hit him pretty hard, but I don't think it'll be enough to kill that bastard. As I respond to my words, I feel a presence manifest behind me. I turn around, swinging my axe wildly. Yeah, sure. Unfortunately, my luck appears to have to run out. <laughs> Human filth. C my axe strikes the wolf in what I assumes to be his ribcage. Unfortunately, my attack only serves to enrage the beast. The moment he swipes his mighty claw sideways, ripping the axe from my hands. Before I can do so much as reach for my weapon, the wolf pounces on me, pinning me to the ground. Die, human. <sighs> my eyes wind as the wolf raises his claw. Pin, why am I reading this? Pinned to the ground with no hope of escape, I watch in terror as the lumbering, razor-sharp appendages is swung down. With more weight and precision behind it than I would dare to imagine, time appears to slow to a halt as death beckons me all too soon. Ooh, get away from my mate! Ah, stupid little! Come here! <sighs> Princess! You'll pay for that, traitor! The moment I resign myself to death, I open my eyes to find an unbelievable sight. Despite the difference in their size, the sheer hopelessness and the sheer hopelessness of our situation, Marari and Fuyu are desperately fighting off the alpha male. You, you girls, what are you doing? You should have taken the opportunity to run away. And leave you here to die over my dead body. <laughs> so I guess we just die together? <laughs> That's exactly my point. We're outmatched. There's no way we can win. But if you two had fled, you could have to least save yourself. You're the one to talk. Why did you come here? You should have stayed in your cabin and treated that girl. Why? Why'd you have to meddle in our affairs? Why? I rise to my feet, grabbing my axe as I do. Isn't it obvious? I came here to save my mate. What is that thunk? It sounds like a rifle re being reloaded. <laughs> the human again die you miserable piece of whack ah! with the two wolf girls holding our opponents back i land two clear heavy blows straight to the alpha male's head it isn't enough to knock him unconscious but the, for the first time since the girls engaged him he appears to be weakening uh, okay i'm just gonna <laughs> simon stop please that's that's enough that's enough the princess is right. Simon, lower your weapon. The pack will take care of the rest. Turning to face the girls, I regrettably drop my weapon. Even if I wanted to finish our opponent off, the truth is, I don't have the strength. Simon, I can't believe you. How could you follow a seer even knowing what dangers might await? Be it the loss of blood, my overwhelming exhaustion, or a rare chink in the wall again. Excuse me, races... <laughs> A rare chink in the wall around my heart, I respond thusly. How could I not come here when my mate was in danger? What? You... What are you... He... Simon just said it, like, before, during the fight. Wait. It is true that I said something like that, maybe in the heat of the moment, but that... You're the only one for you. I've told you that already. For you goes mad on me and she's like... I'm not their first choice, though. <laughs> I'll be like, damn, Fuyu fucking wild. Fuyu's face turns bright red as I make her remember the night she came to me. You, just for that? You, just for sex? You came out here in search of me? You fought that monster? You put your life in danger? How could you do something so reckless and stupid for a reason like that? Look, man, it's, I've been living alone for a while. <laughs> My well's dry! Fuyu makes her way over to my side and immediately punches me in the chest. I'm injured here, hello? Idiot, 
you stupid, stupid human. Aw, oh, she's saying baka. <laughs> I can't believe you. What kind of fool would do a thing like that for someone like me? You're, you're so... Fuyu grasped the front of my shirt and began just quietly sobbing into my shoulder. Idiot, I hate you so much. Oh, oh, the tsundere. Oh, oh, it's so good. <laughs> I know, Fuyu. I know. <laughs> and during Fuyu's dishonesty, I wrap my arms around her. No matter what she says, it's clear that above all, what Fuyu feels is relief. Together, we have fought and won. No amount of sass is going to change that. <laughs> no amount of sass. While their part, uh, pack carts off the alpha male, Mirari, Fuyu, and I take our leave. <coughs> we slowly trudge through the snow, heading back to my cabin with a clear exhaustion and relief painted all over our faces. Finally, it's over. Finally. Uh-oh. I have not been recording audio this entire time. This is awkward, but I guess I just have to put my own music in it. When we return to our cabin, Marari takes it upon herself to nurse her injured friend. She tells the injured girl of everything that happened, including the many embarrassing things that were said. Thankfully, by the time she gets to that part, I've already left the room. Sick. And so has Fuyu. It's time to bone! So, here we are again. I'm gonna ask this once, just to make sure, but are you really okay with this? I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Stupid Simon, ah! Fuyu tries her best not to smile, she nervously walks over to my bed. Despite her words, I can see Fuyu's tail wagging as she walks, and the lingering threat of a smile attempting to form on her lips. Fuyu, I know this is hard for you, but you don't need to keep your guard raised around me anymore. That's no way to enter into a relationship. Uh, relation? What, what are you talking about? Who would want to enter a relationship with you? Oh, oh! You do, Fuyu. The moment I said the word relationship, your tail started wagging like crazy, and you finally broke out into a smile. I- No, that was- That was a mistake. My body is, um, you know, honest? Mmm. Chuckling to myself, I sit beside Fuyu. You know, Fuyu, I have no intention of forcing you to do anything. If you can say to me honestly that you have no desire of any f to, go, to go any further than this, then I won't press the matter. But, you know? I wrap my arm around Fuyu's waist, causing her to jump in fright. Despite her anxiety, however, Fuyu does not pull away from me. Fuyu, when you screamed at that wolf earlier, telling him to get away from my mate, I was overjoyed. Not only that, you immediately thrust yourself into danger, trying desperately to keep him from harming me. Your words may be harsh sometimes, Fuyu, but I can see how deeply you care for others. And of course, if you still take me, I would very much like to be one of those loved ones whom you hold dear. You... you're reading too much into this. I was just trying to protect the princess, that's all. When I call you my mate, I wasn't thinking straight. It was just the heat of the moment, and, um, was it really? Mm. Fuyu lets out a faint whimper as I draw my face closer to hers. Blushing furiously, she casts her gaze downward, desperate to avoid making eye contact. You know, Fuyu, when I was speaking to your injured friend earlier, she told me that she was overwhelmed the moment she walked into this cabin. Apparently, either you or Mirari have been excreting pheromones like crazy. Do you know anything about that? <laughs> Further lowering her head, Fuyu hides her face the best she can. How would I know something like that? I didn't smell any stupid pheromones. Really? Yes, really. I see. I let out a sigh, after which a smile immediately forms on my face. If you can't smell them, then they must be yours after all. Oh! What? Fuyu raises her face, unveiling to me an expression of utter shock. Uh, how could that be possible? How? Why would I be releasing fur? What? <laughs> Fuyu lets out a cute yelp as I place my hand on her thigh. Give up the act, Fuyu. You can't deceive your mate. 
there you go again, calling me, calling yourself my mate so brazenly. You started it for you. It was only for a short while, but for a moment there, you finally showed me your honest side. Now, would you show it to me one more time? I placed my free hand on Fuyu's face and guide her towards me, making her look me in the eye once more. I like you, Fuyu. I think that we have a lot in common, despite our different upbringings. You, who defends your heart desperately, and me, a girl who wants to abandon everyone and everything she held dear. Maybe it's because we've both taken similar paths in life, but I feel that in the short amount of time we've been together, we've grown closer than I thought I'd ever become with someone else ever again. God, that sense. Still holding Fuyu's cheek in my hand, I slowly bring my face closer to hers. Fuyu, I want to stay with you, whether it's in here in this cabin, back in your den, or anywhere else. But at the same time, I have no intention of living with someone who doesn't return my feelings. So, I'm leaving the choice up to you. Damn, Simon, give her, give her a decision and force her to make it. Hell yeah. If you're willing to take a chance on me and open up your heart once for once, then I'll do the same. If not, all you have to do is leave and I won't pursue this, ma pursue this matter any further. For you remain silent for a while. Neither speaking nor getting up to leave, she sits in the one spot, unmoving, staring into my eyes. Seeing this, I don't try to rush her. This is an important decision, and it isn't the one that people like us can make easily. Whatever the conclusion she comes to, I will honor it. Simon, um, I... I, I, I like you too. You do? I don't know about, you know, cooking or cleaning or any of that stuff the princess has learned, but if if you're sure about this, uh, about me, then I bring my face closer and plant a short, soft kiss on Fuyu's cheek. I'm sure. Then Fuyu goes to turn away, then stops herself. As hard as this is for her, she tries her best to continue making eye contact with me. Simon, um... Well, like I said, I don't really know about this stuff, so if you would, you know, yeah, I understand. Leave it all to me. Oh, see, this is the Simon I wanted, all right? Where was this Simon when Mirari came? What, Mirari was too intimidating for you, Simon? Ooh. Ooh. What is that pose? What is happening? Why is there wallpaper on there? Why does this room look brighter than before? Why did she change underwears? <laughs> How'd you change underwear? You telling me that you switched for over from this small bra that you had to like a bigger brown one? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Kissing for you once more, this time on the lips, I gently lower her body onto the bed. Positioning myself above her, I kiss her over and over again, taking my time as Fuyu gradually adjusts herself to the situation. No matter how long I wait, however, Fuyu's heart rate does not slow down, and neither does mine. Fuyu, tell me if I'm going too fast or if I hurt you or anything, okay? I've never done this before either, so I might make a few mistakes. <laughs> Oops, I accidentally scratched you. Hearing my confession, a look of joy appears on Fuyu's face. Knowing that this is my first time too, Fuyu is finally able to calm down, if only slightly. Yeah, I understand. Just be gentle, okay? Without, a, without saying a word, I nod my head, then kiss Fuyu on the lips once more. And then it just like skips the entire thing. Oh, I can just keep myself... I can just contain myself within this nice low environment without getting hurt. <laughs> Sick. Mutually confirming our feelings for one another, we fall back onto the bed in a passionate embrace. We spend the night e together, lost in each. Wait, what? We spend the night together, lost in each other. Okay. In the time since Fuyu and I first became intimate, our daily lives have undergone a number of drastic changes. With the blessing of the new pack leader, Marari, as well as Fuyu's parents, I was officially recognized as a new member of the pack. True to Fuyu's word, the human aspect of myself was more difficult for them to accept than us be both than what? Than us being both women. Okay. 
But through making myself useful and for you advocating for me, the novelty of being a human in the pack soon wore off and I was fully integrated. And soon after this, I was given an important duty along with Fuyu. Oh, because Fuyu is the one who takes care of the cubs. To take care of the pack's cub. Wolf children is the achievement that has gotten locked. Heh heh heh, wolf children. Hey, hey, there's no need for that. Look, there's plenty enough for everyone, okay? Why do they all have the same hair? I said stop that. If you two start fighting again, so help me out. Whoa, whoa, easy there, you three. What seems to be the problem here? Ah, uh, dear. <laughs> Anata! <laughs> They're fighting over breakfast again. Seriously? I thought I made enough for everyone. You did. It isn't the quantity that matters. They want what the other one has. They each want what the other one has. Sheesh, aren't they a bit too young for sibling rivalry? They can't even talk yet, they shouldn't be fighting. Tell me about it. Fuyu picks up one of the cubs while I hold on to the other in order to separate them. Now, you two listen up. If you don't stop fighting, us mamas, us mamas aren't going to feed either one of you. Understand? Despite her tender, loving tone of voice, Fuyu's threat is both real and terrifying. The, uh, the cup in my hands turns around and looks at me. I wink. Don't even think about asking her. Simon, you're way too lenient. They'll grow up spoiled. You say that, and yet Fuyu spoils them just as much as I do, if not more so. I shake my head and smile. Fuyu smiles as well, giggling to herself as she guesses what's on my mind. No matter how much chaos the cubs cause and how many sleepless nights they give us, they are still the pack's beloved children and ours as well. And I wouldn't trade this life away for anything. Alright, and that's the end of Fuyu's route. Wow, okay. Um, I certainly like that a lot better <laughs> of other things that I said but it, within this video. Yeah, I, I really did like Fuyu's route a lot better. I should have gone for her route, but you know what? Those titties, man, Marari's titties, they took they 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 took my mind. <laughs> they took my mind, and then when I realized the situation I was in, it was too late. <laughs> it already happened. So, yeah, I really enjoyed Fuyu's route a lot better. What is it? I feel like overall you do learn more things about uh, about your character if you play both of them because, like, your, your, the narrator has, like, different things to say to the both of them and their problems. And I thought that was really nice. Also, the one thing that actually got me really interested into Marari, just a little more tip other than just her tits, but, you know, uh, going into the extras, one of the picture that I saw, right? I'm actually missing a pictures from here. Oh, they're probably the bad endings. <laughs> it's probably me just being like, eh, they'll be fine. Let me just leave them. Where is it? Where is it? Where is... Both of them have similar pictures of them shoving their butts into my face. Yeah, this picture right here, right? I, I clicked on I saw this picture. And I thought that Marari had cut her hair, so I was like, whoa, there's gonna be a hair cutting scene, you know? She's like, I've changed myself, so she cuts her hair, and I was like, oh, shit, you know? That's awesome, I like, uh, you know, I kind of like those shit stories when, you know, I want to change and all that shit. But no, this is just her having her hair tied up in the bath, which really looks, I don't know, it just looks like she really did cut her hair. And, 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 and honestly, this picture in itself, not like the bath scene, but like her, her haircut right here, is what sold me on the fucking route for Mirari, because I thought this she was gonna get her get her cut, and I was like, I thought Mirari looked really nice with short hair, and I was like, yeah, I think I'll go for Mirari, and then it never happened, <laughs> never fucking happened, and all I'm left with is that I feel exposed, and I feel like I I feel I feel tainted and dirty on the inside. <laughs> But it's a good thing that Fuyu was here to to warm my cold icy heart that was that with that that got icy in the first place because of Mirari. So I'm glad that Fuyu was really here. Okay, so 
my full opinion on Wolf Tales, which I feel like I'm gonna repeat a little bit of what I said in the previous part. And that is, I thought it was really nice in the beginning. And then the bath scene happened and I didn't like that. And everything else happened after that. I didn't very much, you know, like that. I, I very much didn't like any of that. Uh, I did like Fuyu's ending a little bit better. Mirari's ending is just, eh, whatever, you know? And uh, no boy, no. For some reason, for some re I just realized, for some reason, Fuyu's path is like more on the slow path. Like, we should take our time and us humans, we talk to each other for a very long time before we start a relationship and all that with Fuyu, right? And then over here, Mirari's like, yeah, let's get married. <laughs> like, what happened? I told you, it's the power of her tits, dude. Like, Jesus Christ. Is uh, he <laughs> Simon's over here like, you should only do this with the one you love for Mirari. And then after that, it's like, once you've done it, it's, it's marriage time. Okay? <laughs> I guess. So yeah, my opinion of this game is pretty much the same as Love Ribbon. It's really fun in the beginning. And then you get to that one certain part and then the story just goes downhill from there. Or in this case, it just goes, it just becomes very mediocre and it's just, eh, whatever. Mm. <laughs> you know, like, I, I really wish there was something different from it and uh, again even if it was just even if it was, it was just uh simon staying in the cabin and then waiting for the girls to come back i honestly would have liked that it would have been like a little bit refreshing because you didn't have to fight the boss you know it's like it's not your fucking problem i just let them do it and then they come back things are great and it's like all right whatever <laughs> I honestly wouldn't have mind that because it still kind of goes into the whole passive thing that the narrator is in because, you know, but whatever. They've also given you a reason why you should run out there and save them in the first place, so. Ah. You know what? Instead of just letting them go out and then catching up to them, Simon could have just been like, all right, get in the car. You thought they would have been, be been like, no, I'm not getting that beast or whatever, you know? Just been like, get in this car. We're driving over there and we're going to be like, yo, fam. Got this ferocious beast here. You wanna fucking fight against it? Against the alpha male? You know? You want, you want, you want? I fucking, I tamed this beast, bitch. Something, something like that. That would have been, that would have been pretty nice. But, uh, I, I, I don't know if I have anything else to say. I might not even write anything about this. Like, write a full-on review or anything. I don't really, I, I don't know. I don't really do visual novel reviews as much anymore. It's just, eh, whatever. But, yeah. There you go. That's my, uh, it's my bad ramblings of it. <laughs> but again, thank you guys for sticking around for the Wolf Tale series. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, I do have a poll in my community post about what, what I'm going to be playing next. Although there's a clear, there's an obvious answer of which one is going to win by like a fucking mile. By fucking 50 miles, actually. It's pretty, it's, 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 uh, there's a pretty big difference in, in the poll, but the poll is up there, and I'm gonna be playing that next week, so there you have it. This is the end of Wolf Tales, <sighs> and I will see you guys in the next visual novel.